Last month, $1,000 on his name. This month, he broke the 10,000 euro barrier, all within the span of 30 days. Before this, Florian, you were doing a different type of coaching. For as far as I know, you were doing recruitment and it wasn't really going the way that it was supposed to be going because, well, you only had a thousand to your name. But now you're happily five figure owner, five figure maker, five figure whatever you like to call it. And it's something so interesting and crazy to fathom because a lot of people that are watching this at home, they can't even imagine having five figures in a bank account. And you consistently are hitting that now every single month. Tell me, what is it that you've done differently within the span of 30 days that just switched you up and made you the person that you are completely different from what you were a month ago? So I would say the main thing is just reflecting a lot and really taking ownership. That is the biggest change. At first, I was giving away a lot of things to external variables. Mm -hmm. And now I just have taken control of every mm -hmm. single thing in my own life, just looking at things that I can control, and which is everything. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you put yourself in a scenario of 30 days ago, or like it's, it's like 40 now, right? You were hopping on a call with me and you were a completely different person. How did that Florian look? Less certain, uh, less secure. Um, yeah, just less belief in myself, just in a little bit of a rut because I wasn't making it work. Mm -hmm. uh, this new big step I was taking. The, the interesting thing for me, right? You have a lot of Florians. You have a lot of people that are just like you. They were in a situation where, let's say, they didn't really have their life together or they thought that their life was together, right? You're yep. like, hey, man, I'm traveling around. I'm already in Bali, only a thousand euros on your name or whatever. But there is just something missing. Like, even though you had all of the resources just laying right in front of you, you wouldn't engage. You wouldn't just go for it. What, what was the switch? How can somebody else make that same switch? What was the moment where you thought, fuck it, now is the moment that I'm going to go? It comes back to reflecting. Because at first uh, I was a bit comfortable and whatnot and wasn't asking myself the right questions. That's what, what it comes down to, I would say. What made, you ma what made you find out what these questions were? Your coaching. <laughs> 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 your coaching, like literally, um, there were a couple of frameworks that really helped me. Uh, mm -hmm. They're quite simple, but people just don't take the time uh, to. Let's right? go deeper into that, right? Sure. Well, like, uh, appreciate it, it. Thank you. <laughs> um, but if we had to look on like the specific questions, yeah. right? What were those questions that made them hit? Like, what? Like before, you're limiting yourself. You're not taking ownership of your mm -hmm. life, which is something that a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. A lot of people struggle with the fact that. They think they own their life, but their life is being owned by all of the external things that are happening in and around them. But yeah. what questions were the aha moments for you? Um, well, because you say a lot of people think they do already have control mm. over their lives. I thought the same mm. thing. I, I thought I was already quite critical of myself, mm. but then you showed mm. me in, the, in like one of the first coaching calls and I was like, oh damn, I, I guess not. Be a bit more so specific. Be it, I don't remember quite specifically, but you just notice certain patterns in my behavior, uh, which indicated that clearly I don't. What is the pattern? Like, do you remember what one of those patterns were? I was blaming um, external variables. So you just literally asked me like, okay, what makes it that you're not earning 5K, 10K yet? And I was just looking at outward things. Okay. Instead of like just looking at once myself again, once again you, you're getting to the core of the problem yeah. and like like mansplaining it right yeah. but i want you to be specific so that people that might be in a similar situation are like oh now it makes sense yeah because you're just putting putting out the solution and i love it yeah. like a lot of people can have a lot of things to do with these solutions but mm -hmm. some people would just like to have it a bit more concrete so give me specific what, what, what were you blaming uh for example the lead flow i was getting at uh at my clients just right. wasn't wasn't enough um I was too dependent on one client that just wasn't working out and I didn't take control and then start looking for more opportunities. That this, is one example. This is, this is a huge problem for a lot of people, yeah. right? Uh, this is for people that are already closers, not even for like people that want to become closers or want to do something that's going to make the money. You're in a situation where you think, I have it figured out. I have learned a skill to make money. Yeah. And you found a client that is willing to pay you money. 
all right, cool. There's potential. I can make five thousand, ten thousand dollars a month, twenty thousand, whatever. And then you're just sitting there because you finally made it. You finally found the client. You're sitting there. You're waiting, and you're hoping that at some point in your moment in life, the leads are gonna come and you can close. Yeah, that was you. Yeah, you were just sitting there. That was me. And hoping that it would change. Yep. But it it wasn't gonna change, right? Yeah. Why is that? Um, because. Because I didn't take control of myself. There's only one thing in this life that you're responsible over. Yourself. Exactly. And the problem that most people have is that they search, as we said at the start of this podcast, they search for meaning beyond themselves. Everything in life is not me, is outside of me. Something has to come in to come help me to do this, to do that. But eventually the only person that can change your life completely is you well me me, me well me, yeah okay. <laughs> I, I get the confused i get the confused and this is a beautiful thing so you made a huge like a huge exponential growth because you already possess so much tactical fundamentals like in essence you already got the skill of sales in essence you already got coaching before you got everything that you needed before already but it just wasn't working out Mm -hmm. Like you can own all of the skills in order to make like hundreds of thousands of dollars. But if you don't have the fundament to put all of this on, mm -hmm. if you don't take the ownership, you will never achieve those things. Mm -hmm. And it showed because yeah. you only needed a month to scale from zero or well, 1,000 euros dollars in your bank account to 10. Just like that. Like honestly, I didn't give you that much advice on sales. Mm, all yeah. I... All I, I sure I gave you a little bit of like insiders left and right and center, but it that wasn't the core thing that is needed. From now on, sure we still have the coaching. I still give you advice. We're gonna scale it optimally from place to place. Teach you better ways to reflect, and based off of that, you will go to fifteen to twenty to thirty thousand. If you want to scale it more, I'm gonna teach you how to be of more value to these clients. But it all starts once again by the way that you think and how you take ownership of your life. Anything, bro, anything in life that you want, you can get if you take complete ownership of it. And if you don't let anybody else take responsibility over what the fuck is going to happen in your life. Yep. And this is the most beautiful thing that your bald shiny hat has done. <laughs> you took so much ownership that like we have this mastermind now here in South Africa, yeah. right? And I just can see you like like taking ownership. You're going to the gym. You're doing this. You're the person making the decision. No, guys, I'm not going to fucking go on. I'm going to eat healthy. Like as in before, you would have probably been more lenient towards like, ah, you know what? Nobody's mm -hmm. doing it. I'm not going to do it. Like you are the conscious being that is living his life. And if there's anything that I want to give to anybody listening or watching, that one variable that I see that changed you completely is that you were like, no, 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 this is my life. I'm taking it by the balls. And whatever fucking's going to happen, I'm going to make sure that it will succeed. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah, exactly. So one of the models that you, you asked, like what exactly helped then? What are the most important questions? The most important thing, or one of the most important things at least, was literally just asking myself, like, what are my ideal values? Mm. And just writing that out. Most, a lot of people already ask themselves, like, oh, what, what do I want or whatnot? It's all in their head. They never take the time to actually write it down because then you just go deeper and then you can actually reflect more and actually use it. Sure. So that's what I did. That's part of your coaching. Mm -hmm. um, just write down my ideal values. Write down how am I already living to those in, in accordance to those. And what can I do for each value to get there? You know, what do I need to switch? And then you just break that down in small concrete steps, things I need to yeah, change in my behavior or actions that I need to take in order to live in accordance to those. And then you're just much more sort certain, you have more direction. Biggest change is then just much more in line with myself, aligned with who I am, with my values. Value is one of the most important things that is going to be a driving factor of you uh, eventually becoming a millionaire, right? Uh, I mean, every single person watching this, every person in this room probably has the million dollar dream. Hmm. Everybody wants to become a millionaire. And essentially, it all starts with the things that you're doing right now. It starts with getting the fundament straight in your head, getting mm -hmm. the mentality straight in the way that you want to have it. And 
after that, like after you have to fundamentalize, you have like all the limiting beliefs are gone. You have your purpose in life. You have your goals that you want to set, the million dollars, whatever. It's about understanding value. What you said, the thing that I teach you, sure, it shows you what your values are, but more importantly, it's about what makes you valuable. Mm -hmm. And as I said, like the first few months of you being a closer in the business is about you understanding how the business works, is you understanding how to add value to this person because now you're closing deals because those deals that you're closing are making money for that person. Now you're making that person 100K, right? And 100K, he's like, well, uh, this is extra money. All right, let me just give you 10. But eventually, like, you're going to hit a limit because that person is not doing more because he's quite happy and content with the money that's coming in. Sure, it's going to be a little bit more or whatever, but if you want to be more valuable, if you are going to give more value, that's the moment there's going to be more value being put in your pocket in a form of more percentage, in a form of more money. Why? If now it's only because of your doing you're making that person 200k now it's a lot easier to put 20k or 30k in your own pocket mm -hmm. the question is same with the values sure my value is that i like an honest person there's values of me is like this and that and that but what other things are going to make me valuable because i've learned the skill i'm very observant i am a person to take ownership and now the next level of me of getting to a next place is about putting those things things into action on going there right yeah. You're at stage two. Stage one is learning the skill, taking ownership. Stage two is, you know, making the money, go to the five figures and trying to get that and building a steady income so you can trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Stage three is going to a business and supporting that business as much as you can in a higher level, understanding the systems and how this complete business is built. And the last stage is building yourself a business based off everything and all the value that you've given in that business. And that's basically how you're gonna go at it. You're 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 at a good stage. You're doing well, and as long as you take ownership, you can always go to this business and add more value there. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that people don't do. No, oh, you know, fuck it. I'm making 10k, 15k, cool. Next step: observe the business, see where the problems are, and add more value to them. Every single person in my company that is working with me, doesn't matter what position, from the editors to the assistants, they're out there looking, how can I be more of value? Hey, I'm seeing a problem. A bad employee would complain about the problem towards other employees. A good employee would observe the problem and say that there's a problem going on. A great employee would come up with a solution and the best employee would implement the solution without even asking, right? And that is the people that I have in my company. Mm -hmm. they're, they're seeing something already before it's gonna go wrong, before something is happening. They already have a solution. And because they're so valuable to me, I have to, I have to start paying them more. Because if I don't, they're gonna go away out of my company, right? And I don't want that. I want to keep them in because they're so valuable to me. Mm -hmm. And if you can be that, that S tier player, right? You got A players and B players. No, no, we want an S tier player. If you can be an S tier player within any company, any company is more than willing to give you like five to six figures. Especially if that that what you're doing, that's pr those problems and values that you're solving, they're going to be worth seven. Of course, they're going to give you six. That is the key. That is the next step. Mm -hmm. Sure, 10K a month is nice, but hey. Need more. Well, I wouldn't say need no. more, but a little bit more. Like, as a man, you need to always be growing. You need to always go to the next level. Yeah. You need to always go to the next step in your own development, in your own mind, your own reflection, in your own values, your bank account. Everything needs to grow because if you don't grow, you die. That's how life is. Have you looked mm -hmm. at a tree? If a tree doesn't keep on growing, it's literally dead. Mm -hmm. We're all growing. And as a man, that is your duty to keep on growing. If you don't, then, well... <laughs> Yeah, 100%. That's one of my most important values as well, just growth. And that's the thing that I look for everywhere uh, with like the most important decisions in my life. Like, okay, what's going to bring me the most growth? Mm. And that's that's what I mainly base everything mm. off. It's, it's crazy. You know what I've, what I've noticed to like the ultra successful people in my course is that they intuitively, intuitively make decisions that are the biggest risks. Mm. Number one thing is always like the, the quitting the job, right? I've noticed that the people, the earlier the people that quit their jobs, 
the more successful they become in the long term. Like right. I've been doing the coaching within this company for, within like the secret skill and like digital sales numbers now for like five, six years. And I've just noticed the people that quit their jobs on the spot are the people that just, you know, they did it. They, they've yeah. made it. The people that chose to just go out and travel mm -hmm. because the biggest life hack you can do is just travel at a young age, right? You meet more people that are like you. Mm -hmm. The more the people started like going, intertwining with each other within the community, the more the people became successful. These are all those small little traits because everybody around you in your own country are a bunch of dickheads that think that going to school is nice, getting a nine to five job, that's what you need to do. Safety, 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 safety. Shut the fuck up, right? <laughs> The number one thing that you need to do is you need to go out. You need to find people that are the same type of freedom seekers that you are. You need to go out and find more five-figure owners. You need to go find people that are m making six figures and mm -hmm. seeing what they do differently. Connect with them, become friends with them, add value to them. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to just the exact same thing that I was saying. As long as you can be valuable towards the people around you, they will give you value back. You will make more and you will be more. That's why networking is so important. Making more money yeah. is important. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. 100%. That's that's like the most, the people I'm working with right now all came out of my network that I slowly, well, slowly build. I mean, I guess I know someone out of the coaching, the previous coaching I had, mm. uh, but also just people I met in, in Bangkok, in Bali, for example. And then through that, they're like, uh, hey, yeah, I, I've got this opportunity. Let's uh, get you on board. Because they, if you have something that a person needs, then you will always be ahead. So if we talk about this person that uh, landed a job that, like, even though his skill levels might not be in the same level that you are, he's making more money, if not the same, right? Mm -hmm. We know him from different coaching. I like him, but I'm not going to say his name because he, you know, he's not part of my community. <laughs> the thing that I respect is I can see that he put himself in a position where he was of value to a person that needed that. So once again, if you can be of value of a person and you have something that they don't have, they will always be out there to give you that value. So he had a great job, great offer, and he was in a position to be fulfilling that specific role. And boom, there you have it. Yeah. He knew how to tingle those little pieces of value that that person needed. He solved the problem that he needed. Hey, and guess what, Florian? I don't know if you've noticed, but just pitching in general is exactly that. I'm looking for what it is that you need, and I am the solution to your problem. Mm -hmm. That is how a complete structure of a pitch looks. And it is not a dirty way of selling. You're literally just mm -hmm. saying, so what is it that you need? Oh, so that's what you need? That's a problem? So like, is your life like happy with this specific problem that you're having? No. Would you like to solve it? Yes. What if you, you know, you got this exact solution that I have right here for you? Wouldn't that be great? It kind of would. Great. Let's work together. Simple as fucking structure. Mm -hmm. But just simply this will get you money. We'll get you people. We'll get you love. We'll get you anything. Mm -hmm. Finding out and understanding what somebody's needs are giving them exactly what they desire, all in the form of, there you go, will get you what you want. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you want? What is that I want? Life. More life. I've talked to you like, I know. plenty of times, bro. Like <laughs> life. I want more life. Life is all that I want. And life is, as I said, this, this exact conversation, mm -hmm. right? Not only towards you, but the people that are listening or watching. If I'm able to just give you a little bit of life, I just gave you advice that can change your life, that will help you uplift your life even more. That piece of giving towards somebody that I like, love, adore, the, just the, the, the thought that 10 people are gonna watch this podcast and of those 10 people, one person just made a decision that completely life. If I'm able to take care of my family, my little brother, my mom and my dad, that's life. If I'm able to do more to give more, Mm -hmm. That's life. So my next goal is to have more life and to enjoy life more, bro. I look mm -hmm. out at this fucking window. I can see the mountains, see the sea, and all that I'm feeling is life. life. <laughs> That's all it is, man. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate Beautiful. it. Yeah, sure. What is your next? What is your next goal? What are you trying to go after? You mean like in, in the very short term? Life. Not <laughs> enjoy life. Yeah. No, um, well, yeah, enjoy life. Um, sure. Just well, you, you keep know, going. We just, we just uh, popped in my head. I remember like um, we were sitting in the car, right? And yeah. um, we're, like for the people that don't know, we're doing like this Cape Town mastermind. We have like this whole villa. I rent it on like all five figure owners come here to just get more money, whatever. Uh, and uh, we, we do this like every so-and-so months in different countries, yada, yada, yada. And 
I'm, I'm driving with Florian. He just hit his first 10K month. And we're driving and I'm like, man, we're so rich. And he looks at me like, no, no, you're rich. I'm like, no, 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 bro, we're rich. He's like, what the fuck do you mean, bro? I'm not rich. I'm like, yes, you fucking are. Look around you, man. Sea, mountains, BMW. Like, this is fucking richness. The people around you don't have this. You have it. You have the capability, the possibility to make your parents, your family, your friends, everybody happy. You can even give them pieces of advice and things in life. Bro, you have life. You have richness. And just simply seeing the sun shine through the window while driving at responsible speeds. <laughs> rich. We are so rich. And just the feeling of that happiness and gratitude just made us both feel so much richer. Yeah. It, it's just funny because like simply being rich is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. Being happy is a state of mind. And if you understand that it's all within yourself, you can be the richest man in the world without even having anything to own. So what is the next step for you? Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> well, the next step is keep growing and hit 20K. Easy. Yeah. So what is the step that you need to take in order to get there? Provide more value, like you said. So just need to be reflect even more, but then on the business, businesses that I work with, uh, but also towards myself as my as a closer. What can I improve as a closer? And what more value can I add to give more value so that I receive more value? The people that observe the most are the best. Mm. This is like a little bit of advice that I can give you immediately. The reason that I'm in a position that I am today is because I observed the people that did this before me. Hmm. I observed the richest people in the world to see what they did differently than I did. Hmm. I observed them and I saw, hey, they're thinking differently. My parents are not thinking like this. I should think like them. And hmm. if I think like them, suddenly what I started to notice was that I was starting to make more money. Then I was like, okay, cool. I have this figured out, but like, I feel like my life is not structured. So who has his life structured? And I started observing that. I started observing that structure and I started implementing the same structure. I started looking for people with the same personality that were living a better life than me. And I was just molding this whole thing in and around it just to make the best version of my life. And with business, I constantly am looking at what other people are doing. I'm, bro, I, I fucking, uh, I was listening to the podcast of Jeff Bezos. And simply the way he structured his management meetings. I saw that. I listened to it. I'm like, I'm going to implement this. Genius move. Instead of me being the first person to talk, the like hierarchy-wise, the, 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 the lowest person. I, I don't want to say low, but you know what I mean? Like the, the, the last person to usually speak is the person that speaks first. And then you don't have like any clout from judgment because I'm like, you know, the authority. Or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So like you don't get any clout of judgment. Everybody gets like fresh ideas and you write complete essays before you even do the meeting. I'm like, bam, genius idea. Constantly, I'm looking at people that are doing things better than I do so I can learn from it. So I can use that, implement that for myself. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're in that position that you are right now mm -hmm. and you're working for this specific company, mm -hmm. look at what they're doing perfectly. Mm -hmm. And look like, hey, I'm seeing this is going well. Oh, so that is how that works. So this is how that works. How, how is a different company doing it? How is this company putting in those specific things? What is the direct competitor doing? Oh, that's interesting. They're doing something that we're not doing. Maybe I can implement that with us. And that is free value. Mm -hmm. And that makes me more valuable. If you can simply go and steal like an artist, like don't blatantly copy the same exact strategy, right? But see what people are doing that is working and see how you can mold that into the same strategy that you have or even make it better if you can see that there are things going on in a better way. Get somebody and have conversations with them and see that is interesting, that is cool, but be observant, right? Like the first level, like if we go on levels again, is just simply reflecting. Ah, oh, this is what I did yesterday. Okay, what can you improve based on yesterday? Okay, this is what I saw today. What can I observe more? What are like the underlying things? What is the thing that he meant when he said something? And how can I use that myself too again in the next thing that I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to level up, it's about even going a level deeper in your reflection, going a level deeper in your observing. Mm -hmm. When I was doing sales back in the day, like selling newspapers on the streets, I used to think that the people were selling that were selling 10 subscriptions a day were gods. Mm -hmm. But because I put them on the pedestal, you know what happened? I, I didn't dare to even like touch, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, impossible. Yeah. I cannot do that. 
But the second I started realizing that they're just normal human mortal beings, mm -hmm. guess what happened? I was like, he's just like me. Mm -hmm. So if I just observe what he's doing, bro, and I tried everything. I tried speaking in the same tone that they were doing. I tried, like they were hitting somebody in the head with a newspaper. I tried doing that because, because I thought of my sense. Like their tonality, the, the things that they were saying, the exact yeah. accent, everything mm -hmm. I tried until I figured out, okay, this is what it is that works. I'm gonna implement this and do it better. Same with business. And I started becoming a manager. I looked what the other managers were doing. I started using my own sauce based off what I observed. And if there's so many people that have done it so much better than you have already, you can easily do it, right? Mm -hmm. And only then, if you have your own creative brain, you can pour everything on top of that and you can become even more successful. Exactly. Yeah, no, that, that's, that ties back into what you said earlier about uh, why it's so important to travel because you come into this new environment, yes. you meet all these new people yes. where you can steal everything from. You like know? an artist, like, yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. That's what Picasso did, bro. Picasso yeah. stole everything. He literally looks at something that he thought is interesting and he was like, hmm, that's nice, steal. But like, oh, instead, of like, like, instead of like actually stealing it, he's, he's using, using it. Using inspiration. Yes. Yeah. And that's the trick. There's like, bro, chat GPT. <laughs> Right? It is all genius, but he's yeah. basically sourcing everything from the internet. Mm -hmm. And he's making better essays, better stories, better anything than anyone has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's basically using everything that is out there already and seeing the things that are better and better and better, implementing that, using that, all condensed in this, this few laps of text that is just coming out of it based on your question. Mm -hmm. All because he steals. <laughs> Everything that's out there, like mm -hmm. there were like this huge controversies even about like what what the fuck was that like, like pictures like they were like from uh, the stock X uh, no st what is it called the stock images website whatever, but yeah, kind of forgot the point I wanted to make. <laughs> Go to new environments, use inspiration from other people, in order to grow yourself. The number one reason I started traveling is because of David Zio. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've told you this or yeah, you yeah. remember. Yeah, but like there was like. The, the podcast that I had to start with was just mm -hmm. my my hack to start to talk to people that were way further than yeah, I was. Great idea. Like, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here we are again. Yeah. Uh, you have like an excuse <laughs> to talk to somebody for the whole yeah. hour. And um, what I do is like I was talking to him. Like he just said something. He's like, yeah, I travel a lot. Like it's been my biggest blessing. Man, that's the biggest fucking Instagram channel in the world. Uh, sports Instagram channel in the world. Excuse me. And he's just like, yeah, I go to Ibiza. I go sit in this hotel bar and like da 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 da. And he said, the one thing that changed my complete perception of what traveling even meant is better to sit in the cheapest room in the most expensive hotel than go in the most expensive room in the cheapest hotel. Mm -hmm. Because the people that are in the expensive hotels, even though you have the cheapest room, are the most interesting people to talk to. Mm -hmm. Completely shifted my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I went to the best hotels. Mm -hmm. I didn't even pay for the hotels. I just went to sit in the bars just to see if there was somebody interesting, see how yeah. I can like open up a conversation. I was in Miami just trying to go to like the Four Seasons or whatever, just to try to like, just to get a glimpse of what a conversation is. Mm -hmm. I went to the most luxurious bars. I didn't even fucking drink. I got sparkling water, I like mm -hmm. a mocktail, just sort of would look that I had a drink, would buy another person a drink, see what kind of conversation, bro, what the craziest things would happen. All because I started understanding that you're not paying for the people that are there, but for the people that are not there. Like the expensive things are only affordable by the people that can pay it, right? That's why an exclusive community like ours, like people pay a lot for being in the coaching, but the people yeah. you have around you, like those are the people that have the exact same vibe as you because yeah. they're able to afford it. They understand, they've done something to accumulate that money and they're yeah. in there. Like everything is about like understanding those vibes beyond instead of just saying, at the lower ground, I'm like, oh, I'm too scared to invest. I'm scared, too scared to go out, to take a risk, to take a flight, to do this, to do that. Yeah. That one flight you took to Bali, I mean, I must say, you're living quite the life, aren't you? To Cape Town, you mean? No, oh, to Bali, the first one. Oh. Right? You took a risk to go to Bali. Yeah, no, you I went to Bangkok first sorry, and sorry. then to Bali. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Well, it's you're right. No, you're right, 100%. And the, the funny thing is, like, uh, when I speak to people from back home in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. It seems like they're just doing the same thing, but they basically are doing the same thing. And they literally tell me like, oh, it's kind of a, a shocking moment for them. Like I tell them like, oh, this, 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 doing this, this, this. Oh, this happened, this happened. I'm um, just living life and also progressing while they're still kind of stand, standing still and not to bash or anything. Not at all, but... Um, You're allowed. Bash them. <laughs> no, no. But it's just like when you step out of the comfort zone, when you do take those risks, yeah. then you just, things start happening. 
100%. You know, and uh, like that's what people want, but they're too much in the comfort zone. Just, just put it one way, right? I know this is going to sound like oh, hippy flippy, mm. but bro, you you just ascended on a different frequency. So you started literally living on a higher, higher vibe, higher frequency. You started attracting things that are on this frequency. We're all on radio channels. And mm. those depressed people in the Netherlands, they're just on a depressed channel mm -hmm. where they're only hearing the complaints of other people. When they go hang out in a rainy, cloudy day, they're sipping their, their cheap wine and they're like, ah, what have you complained about? Ah, I complain about this. <laughs> <laughs> and they're only talking about other people. They're only gossiping. That's the vibe that they're on. Of course, they're mm -hmm. not growing. Mm -hmm. But now... When you go to like Bali or Bangkok, mm -hmm. like what people talk about is their life, businesses, things to grow on, things to level up with. Mm -hmm. They talk about their expertise and your expertise. Bro, the frequency is so much more positive and nice. Yeah. Like, yo, achieve this. Oh, shit, bro. That sucks. You got to go better. You know, like you're just pushing each other to go beyond and way, way, yeah. way beyond. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you, bro. Because you start going on this higher frequency, you start seeing all of the things and attracting all of the things that are on this frequency instead of all of the negative things that are down here. Everybody that's limiting themselves is only going to see more limits. Everybody that is empowering themselves is only going to get more power. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we are. What would you say to the people that are still stuck in that way of thinking? You're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want me to say? Like, if I'm gonna be really honest, I'm mm. I, I I'm gonna be very straightforward. Every person that is still stuck in that way is just a complete loser, mm. because there's so much shit out there. But every single person is just not believing because yeah. it's beyond them, right? They see something like this. Oh, this person's making ten thousand dollars scam. Yeah. Whoa, what the fuck, bro? Like, their, their their cognitive function is basically like I have never seen anything in my life. My parents are not making $10,000 mm. a month. My teachers are not making $10,000 mm. a month. I've never seen 10,000 in my life. What the fuck? No, this is not possible. So that is their paradigm because they live in this circle yeah. where that is all there is. Like mm. for them, seeing a person make $10,000 euros is, is fiction, is a fairy tale. So of course, bro, what have we learned from back in the day? Fairy tales are fake. Like, Fucking Hansel and Gretel never happened. There is no witch. There's no monsters under my bed. All of that shit is fake. But guess what? It is not. Yeah. Until you start seeing it with your own eyes, you will not believe it. Mm -hmm. And if you're dumb enough to take the risk, I'm just going to do quotation marks here, dumb enough to take the risk, everybody else around you is going to tell you that you're stupid. Hmm. Because none of that stuff seems like reality in none of people's eyes. Yeah. But you have to be the odd one out. Yeah. Because if you are and you take the step and you aren't the person doing ignoring everybody else around you, you start making it. And guess who's going to call you back in a couple of months? <laughs> now suddenly it's become reality. Yeah. Now it's suddenly real because they see you yeah. traveling and going to places. So it is reality. Yeah. So you can make ten thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Look at all your friends. How many people have called you since you made the stories in Cape Town? How much people have sent you messages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite a few. How much people called you dumb and stupid when you made the first decision? Not that many, to be honest. Oh. Not that many. They, they were quite supportive. Not your they, parents. I'm talking about like <laughs> I'm talking about like people around you. Maybe behind my back, not to my face. Fair. Every right. single one of my friends, my family. Nobody, no, literally, and this was like, because now it's more of a normal thing, right? Like yeah. the online business thing. Like, I feel like it's more accepted. But like yeah. when I did it, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Money on the internet? <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> Stay home, Ramin. Stay home. Go to school. I'm yeah. like, no, 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 but you don't understand. No, 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 you don't understand. Yeah. You don't fuck. Like, hold on, you fucking horse. My friends, I told them every single day that I was going to become rich and work online. I'm going to travel the world. They were like, mm -hmm. bro. Be normal. <laughs> like, I am. You guys are the people that are not normal. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure that you're not the guy that's normal. But that's it. If your whole paradigm of people is like that, mm -hmm. I mean, bro, if everybody, if a hundred people mm -hmm. in a room are going to tell you that you're dumb, you're going to believe that you're dumb. Yep. Right? It's, it's that simple. And if it's the other way around, if 100 people in the room are going to tell you that you're smart, then you're going to think you're smart. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense. It's all that I'm yeah. seeing. Yeah. But it takes a lot of power, willpower, sheer motivation, knowing that you want to make a change in your life 
in order to still, whether it's a hundred people telling you no, whether it's a hundred people telling you that you're dumb, whether it's a hundred people telling you that you're making a wrong decision, to mm -hmm. just still go out of it and escape the matrix. Yeah. Because that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. That is what it is. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that are, like you're saying, that are stuck. And there's a lot of like biases around them, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, like, look mm -hmm. around you. How much shit do you see that's red? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, there's a lot of red out here. All right, close your eyes. Tell me anything you saw that was blue. Nothing. You can't see it because you're focused on the red. Exactly. And everybody's just focusing on the negativity and whether the things are not possible. So if you think of every single moment that you're starting to do something, starting entrepreneurship, starting to get out of a place that is not going to work, mm -hmm. you're going to find only reasons and biases about why it's not going to work. Yep. Gonna flip the switch. Exactly. Uh, you know, for me, it was a, a slow, it was just a, yeah, a slow process of just gradually becoming more aware and just feeling more disconnect with my current situation, which was when I was still working in recruitment. Hmm. Not to bash the company, it was a great company I worked for, I must say, like the regular nine to five. Plenty of opportunities. Um, I had fun there, good coaching, opportunities to grow. But still, it was just feeling a bit of stagnation and just a bit of disconnect. And then that just turned into taking this step. And you know, it was something that really stuck with me because at that time I was like, oh, this is such a crazy step I'm taking. You know, I'm just quitting my good job with opportunities, taking a risk, moving abroad to pursue something else with no guarantee that's gonna work. And you know, the previous coach, he told me, because I, I told him that, and um, he told me, it's really stuck with me, he said, you know what would be crazy for him? If you keep living your life in disconnect, stagnation, instead of following your dreams and taking a chance so that you live according in, yeah, in accordance with yourself and what you actually want. That really stuck with me, because that's what most people are stuck in. I mean, here you are. Yeah, yeah. Here you are. You've made it in life. Yeah. And you're only at the beginning. Exactly. You're literally yeah, yeah, yeah. only beginning. You've yeah. only made your first step. You've only started to realize what it means to be responsible of your own life. Mm -hmm. You've only unlocked that cha like that chapter. Mm -hmm. Now, with all of this responsibility, what's the next one? What's the next step? What is Florian going to do next? Well, first, grow more as a closer. Mm provide more value to businesses. Mm. But then eventually, of course, I'm gonna start my own business um, because I need to keep growing and not quite sure what that would be yet. I think that's a good one for the next episode. <laughs> exactly. Right, we're gonna see yeah. when, you, when you hit the six figures, then uh, we could just re-invite you again. Let's make it seven figures. Done deal. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add for the viewers at home? What is the biggest thing that made you grow? The biggest thing that made me grow? Bro, I've had so many moments where I've grown, right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the number one thing is knowing how to reflect properly and ask the right questions. Yeah. Um, if you're not alone enough with yourself, if you don't take moments to process things that happen, if you don't know how to properly reflect on those moments, you wouldn't know how to grow. Mm -hmm. So. I feel like just being able to see the lessons in the L's, right? No, seeing, okay, this is where I fucked up massively, or even just being able to analyze what made me win. Starting to recognize patterns, really observing. That's the number one key that had made the most of the growth. Hmm. Because if, you don't, if you're not, like, if you're opening your eyes, but you're not looking, like, you won't see. <laughs> yeah. It's about really, really picking out what you're trying to see. And the best way to do it is have the right questions being asked to you to be able to know what to reflect on. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you might find a question in a book or you might find a question in a video. or Coach. Coach. Yeah. There are a lot of ways of going by it, but you just need to find the right questions in order to get the answers that you need. Mm -hmm. And you need an answer to grow, mm -hmm. but the core of that answer is always, always a question. Yeah. 
that is also a lot of the value that you've given me because you have a lot of awareness and you're just making people more aware. That's one of the most important things about the coaching and like, like I'm paying you a lot of money. <laughs> In the long term, what the fuck is that money? Sure. You're making me so much more aware um, and giving me the tools I need in order to grow. Like, what is that money in the long term then? If you can bring question. me that. Then. Good question. Yeah. Florian, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you on a pod. Thank Hope you A lot of much. people learn and just had a little bit of view in your journey. I hope you learned some stuff too. Yeah. I, yeah. I got truly inspired once again by your presence. So appreciate that. Thank you, man. Uh, I want to take this moment as well to uh, express my gratitude to you oh. truly appreciate you man uh, yeah learning a lot from you and also uh, just enjoying cape town together with you <laughs>